Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hassan, and this is a video about how to get your gallery to fit right on different size screens you, when you put your gallery in a container. Now this comes from a question from one of you, and what we've been doing is we've been building out this Power App, and as you guys ask me questions, I've been focusing more on some of the parts that maybe I skip. Sometimes when I create these videos, I skip certain parts because I think maybe you would get bored. So I had one here from Manisha and you know, how did you put the gallery in a container without any issues? I tried, but it's not as expected. So we created a gallery on the first video of this power app. And so let me go into more detail, take it a little bit slower. Sometimes I go pretty fast and I skip over steps because I don't want to bore you. If you want me to slow down, let me know. If you want me to go faster, let me know. I'm trying to find that sweet spot. So here's my gallery, right? It's in a container and it's in Teams. So it's in a Teams Power App. So I put it in a container, that way it auto resizes. So if we're to press play, oh, right now we're in a tablet view and you can see everything still kind of fits in there perfectly. And if we were to go back to the full size, um, canvas size, you can see everything still is fitting in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and publish this and I wanna see what it looks like in Teams. So I loaded up Teams and I loaded up the client version. You can open this up in the web. And you can see we have teams over here on the left side and now we have all of our projects in the channel. To me, this is looking beautiful. Let's try and resize it. When I resize it, look how it kind of fits in there. It's still fitting in there just fine in the web browser. So that's, that's why we put things in containers when they're in teams. There is a point where it's just, okay, it's cutting it off now when it gets that small. But with my uh, browser, you know, being full width, it still fits in there pretty good. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add a container that's for the full screen. So container, and this container is gonna be a vertical container. Now, why do I choose vertical? Because vertical, it's very confusing. Vertical is actually uh, horizontal uh, containers that I want, right? So I, it's gonna have three containers inside of it. It's gonna have a container for my top bar navigation, my list of my table names or my gallery, and then it'll have my gallery. So inside my screen, the first thing I'm gonna do is a vertical container, and I'm gonna have it take up the entire space for now. We'll change that in a second. And inside this container, I'm gonna have three horizontal containers. So there's one, and make sure to go back to the top level container. Two, Three. Oh, and see, I didn't go back. You got to make sure that you select that top level container and put the container where you think it will be. Now, this is giving you a much better visual of what you want. You see, well, I have three box containers now. Now, I want to resize them. And to resize them on my top level container right here, I'm just going to rename this top level container, top level. So now I've renamed it and it kind of resized some things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this container top level. I'm going to do the width, parent.width. And I've gone over this, but I'm going to go into a lot more detail. I don't know how long this video will be, but maybe this will be helpful for people for, for me to slow down. So parent.width and parent.height. And why am I doing that? I'm saying, okay, this top level container, I want you to be the size of the screen. So when I say parent.height, I'm saying the one up of this container, so that's the screen. So whatever the screen size is, so if we went in here into height or width, you can see that it's saying it's setting up the app width and the app minimum uh, screen. So I'm just taking that and pushing it down into my container. I could probably, copy this instead of doing parent dot width I could come into the width type in the same equation this is going to give me the same thing as parent dot width now for the first container here the width we want parent dot width right because we want the entire length same thing on container 11 parent dot width and this is just going to help it resize when your galleries or whatever your content is 
in your screen. So parent.width. Okay, now height. This is where it's a little different, right? Now we're going to go over here to the right side and we're going to do the fill portions. Now the top bar here, I want to be small. The second bar, I want to be small. But the third bar, I want it to be large. So I'm going to change the fill portions to something larger. Maybe like a five or even a six. Now you can see now my bottom where I'm going to put the gallery is where uh, the largest container. Now the next problem is, is this is maybe too big. Why is it too big? The minimum height here, the minimum height on the property side, maybe we want to lessen that to 50, maybe even less. Let's go to 25. And then here we'll change this one to 25. All right. And then finally, I'll increase my fill portions even more. There we go. I increased it to 10 of 12. So now we have, this is where my top bar navigation will be. And we could turn this into a component if we wanted or, you know, however we want to do it. And this is where my table column names will be. So let's insert my gallery in this container. So I'm going to insert a vertical gallery. All right, so we have a very simple vertical gallery. I have a, a data source a, in Microsoft Dataverse. Now, this is not normal Dataverse. This is Dataverse for Teams. So this comes with Office 365 licenses, many of them, not all of them, but many of your licenses for Office 365 come with Dataverse for Teams. All right, so we have our data in here. So next what I'm going to do is I, I don't want the picture. I don't, I don't want the picture. So I'm going to come over here to image title, the layout, and I'm going to change it to probably just title and subtitle. Now you can see that the gallery, once again, is not taking up that entire space. So for the gallery, I'm going to do parent.height, parent.width. Why? Because I want it to be as big as this container. This container is getting the fill portions for the height, and the width is parent.width. So whatever this container is, I want my gallery to be the same. So width, parent.width, height, parent.height. All right, so we have our gallery in there. Let's press play, take a look. You can see now we have this top container, the second container, and then my gallery. Now. I want this, this is preference, this is opinion. Many people may disagree. Maybe you wanna design it a different way. I like to make it look like Excel or make it look like SharePoint. I like to make it look like a table, you know, with columns and headers. So I'm gonna take my first column here and I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And the ID, I'll make it a little smaller too. Probably matching, so perfect. Now, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to copy it maybe six times. It depends on how many columns you want in here. You don't want too many, right? There's a point where you do have too many columns. Don't try and show everything. Just, you know, there's ways you can show, maybe we'll get into that next. I'll show how to make a checkbox more than just a Boolean value, more than just a yes or no. I figured out a cool, neat way to do that. All right, so now all of these, I'm going to remove the bold on them. So I'm just holding down control and selecting them all. I'm going to change them to normal. Okay, and then I'll keep my title bold. Okay, now I want to work on the width, but first I'm going to change all of these. This.name, uh, maybe this is manager. And, you know, you can fit some more in here. Oh, project ID, we have that one. Percent complete. I'm just going to fill out some of the columns that I have created in my table and then I'm going to put them in here. Okay, so right now I have about seven columns. I have the name, the manager name, the phase, the percent complete, the project status, and then the start and end time. Okay, now that I have my table columns in there, we want them to fit in there at the right size. There's many different ways to do this, but I'm going to take the easy way out. This is my opinion again. I'm going to go to width and I'm going to say, okay, I have seven columns, right? One, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to say parent.width divided by seven. And I'm going to do that on all of my columns, all of them. I can highlight them all. Oops. I'm going to hold down control, highlight each one. And I'm going to go to width. I'm just going to paste in parent.width divided by seven. Now I'm going to move them to their 
locations that I want them in. All right, so for the width of all of my table columns now, I did parent.width divided by seven because that's how many columns I have. That's just an opinion, that's just how I do it easily. This is where I want my labels of my table. So I'm gonna insert seven labels. So one, I'll just copy paste it seven times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna take all of these labels and I'll probably go to my tree here. I'm gonna hold down control, click all of them. Width, oops, not visible, width. Once again, parent.width divided by seven. Look at that, it's fitting in there perfect, right? That's what I want. I want it to fit in there just perfectly. Now we want the height to fix, so how do we fix the height? We can just come over here to the container and right here, stretch. So now each label takes out the entire space of the container. So for the height of my columns, I can just pull this down. It'll be just fine if I just pull it down for the entire um, height of the gallery line. And so you can see now the title field is lined up exactly along there. Um, but I'd like to have a little bit of space in there just to keep it off that edge. Okay, so we have a new gallery. It's looking good. Now, a percent complete, we can come in here on the text value. We can say, and a percent sign. Adds a little bit in there. Um, we could even turn this into a progress bar. So, like, there's lots of ways to do this. You could do SVGs. But okay, let's keep it simple. So very, very easily, I could come in here and I can insert a rectangle, right? And I want it to be, now, so this is where another thing that I, that I like to do is I have the percent complete uh, column. This is why you should rename them, but it's right here. Uh, you can't see with my head in the way, but this percent complete column, it's, I'll rename it text uh, complete. Now for this rectangle, what do I do? I come in here and I say the X value is equal to text complete dot X. And then the width is equal to text complete, uh, complete dot width. So now it takes up that entire space. So now I'm gonna go to the fill property and I'm gonna lessen that um, the alpha value, the how uh, transparent it is, maybe like a 0.4. Okay, so now here comes the next trick. Now to show a progress bar really easily and really quickly, we added that rectangle, we made it an alpha value. Now I'm gonna to come to this width value and you can see that it's equal to 195 with a decimal. So I'll just round to 195. So what am I gonna do? I can just leave it like that actually. And I can say multiply by this item dot percent complete and we actually want to do that divided by 100 to turn that into a fraction. There we go. So I'm saying, okay, percent complete is normally 50, but divided by 100 makes it one half. And we're doing, you know, five. And so now we have a progress bar on percent complete. Super easy way to do it without SVGs, without making, you know, something super complicated. So we're looking like the gallery's looking better. Now let's go into filtering. And this is different when it's dataverse. If you go to the gallery, you can see here on the right side, we have views. If I try and do a filter on my choice field, it's just not gonna work. So project phase um, equals, project phase equals, I want it to be, you know, in initiate our request. It's just not gonna work. It's giving me an error, incompatible type, because that's a, uh, a text I can try and do you know project phase or what if I did this let's see uh, request still just not working so let's take the easy way out so project lists now we want to create a view that's the easy way to do this in Dataverse right here view so I'm gonna go to the outside and I'm gonna go to power apps and then I'm gonna go to that table so I went to my team in uh, Power Apps, and now I'm gonna go to the table here. And I wanna create a view. So I'm gonna say new view. Uh, this is gonna be when it's requests. This only shows requests. All 
All right, so we have our columns. Maybe we want to show the same columns that we were showing uh, before. All right, so I created a view. I have the same columns in there. Now, edit filters. I'm going to add a filter on the project phase. So project phase equals request. Click OK. So now it's only going to show my two in project phase. So I'm going to save and publish now. Then I'm going to go back to my Power App. So now I'm on my new screen. I'm clicking on the gallery, Views. I'm going to add the request view. Boom, now it's filtered. I don't have to, you know, create all of that in here. So it's just uh, changing the items to filter, project list, project list views dot requests. So now it has created that new view. Okay, now for the final touch, the final touch of magic. If you press play, you notice that it doesn't line up right with my labels. So all I'm going to do is come in here and do the X value. I'll rename each of my labels, right? All right, so now for each of these, the owner, I'm going to say the X value is the same as our label. Label owner dot X. Do that on phase. The X value, I wanted to match that label. Label phase dot X. Percent complete. Label complete dot X. So now, finally, when we press play, everything lines up perfectly. We probably should center all of these. We want this in the center just so it kind of matches perfectly up. Now everything matches. We can resize it to a different size and it's still going to line up with my gallery. That is how you really make the gallery look great when you put your gallery in a container. All from your question. I hope that answers it. Maybe a longer video than I intended, but that's how I create a gallery when I put it in a container. And we're using Dataverse for Teams, so it's a little different than if we did you know, a SharePoint data source or an Excel data source. But I have other videos on that. If you have that question, maybe I'll um, ask me. It is different how you filter if you're using a different type of data source. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next time.